Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today are two guests who have never been in the studio before, but our paths have definitely crossed. Uh, Really appreciate you being here. Uh, The organization we're going to talk about today is The Next Step. So I am thrilled that Darcy Glidewell and Clay Jenkins have joined us. So welcome to The Preventable. Thank you. We're so glad to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. No, thank you. So, okay. I think that The Next Step is like one of those organizations that people don't know about and that once you find out about it, you're like, why did I not know about this sooner? Mm. Um, And I will tell you, I've worked in this field for 15 years and I didn't really know about it until I became executive director. Um, I wish I would have known about it sooner. So Darcy or Clay, either one, tell us a little bit about the mission of The Next Step. Go ahead. Man, that was in unison. How, wait, first uh, of all, first we, of all, how we, long have we, you two worked together? How long have we worked together? Because that was together? like creepily, like uh, yeah, that's, scary. That's how very you very indicative uh, you of know, what we typically do. Yeah. I joined the board a little before Darcy, maybe six months, and our records weren't great at then. But I think um, I started either in late 2011, or early 2012. Wow. Which I'll I'll mm-hmm. give a little insight into how I got involved. Cool. Yes. So, but, she came yeah. right after, and then, years, you know, years. so we've worked together on the board for, I don't know, 10 or 11 years, depending upon who's counting uh, right. today. So uh, we're like we're like family, so we'll yield to each other and Love it. cut and each other. And we'll cut each other off, oh, too. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, uh-huh. don't, don't mm-hmm. be surprised if that happens. Nope, but. that's great. <laughs> that's great. So since you have the mic, Clay, what is the next step? We provide uh, tuition assistance for those who are in recovery from drug and alcohol um, substance abuse uh, to help them get back in school or their trade, whatever they prefer, mm-hmm. um, and you know complete their education, which leads to higher income for them, a way out of uh, past troubles and challenges. But you know to 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 get the money's not easy because um, we have a a rigorous uh, process to go through, mm-hmm. which we can talk about. But the, our really our mission is to provide tuition assistance, and we know that by doing that, um, St. Louis as a community becomes a better place. Um, and really, that is you know what we're all about doing, and we're really uh, highly focused on that. They they also have to be in a in a twelve step program. Okay, um, have a sponsor, and you know all of that is part of they have to share their financial. Um, challenges or current mm-hmm. financial status because proving that um, there's a need is a big part of uh, uh, what our donor base uh, asks us to do. Mm-hmm. Not only um, a financial need, but they are following the program to get their um, education along with their sobriety. Sobriety is first and their education is second. So um, when they go through an interview um, with people on the board, the, really, the questions are around what's your educational goals, but how are you doing in your sobriety? Okay, you know? so let so me let me unpack that. what you just said because you said a whole lot, and I appreciate <laughs> that. So, what the next step is is it provides tuition assistance for people in long term recovery through the AA program or or a twelve step program, yep. right? Any That's twelve step, any twelve N-A-C-A-H-A-A. step, C A H A A A. Yeah, but that that participation in the 12 step that's a pretty vital requirement correct currently yes yes and we we believe that um, people who are working a 12-step program of recovery who have a sponsor who are accountable to their sponsor and attending meetings and kind of have a community we see a lot of long-term sobriety with those groups and the minimum sobriety to apply for the next step is is one year got it so you need kind of at least one year you know, to use the old terminology, like clean, one yep. year clean, one year clean and sober, to yep. be able to then um, submit an application and to interview, and that usually takes place around April ish, yep. right? April first is our deadline every year, and then we conduct interviews. Um, usually, we've been doing them by Zoom since mm-hmm. you okay. know, the pandemic, yeah. and they interview with two board members. Cool, and then we. Yeah. We move quick. We make our decisions quickly so that we can, if they're awarded funding, they can use it for summer school right away. Awesome. So when, when we're 
we award funds. They can use it for summer, fall, or spring of the following year. And then applicants reapply every single year. Part of the application process is to update us, to write um, some short essay questions, and just give us a picture of what's going on in their life. Because as we know, stuff changes right. all the time. And so yeah. the tuition assistance, so it can be to pay, does it just go to pay for like enrollment? Could it also be used for books yep. and for things like that? Books Are there any tuition. limitations? Yeah. Okay. Books and tuition, um, we pay the educational institution directly. If Got somebody okay. was had, had a lab fee or a, they could find a book used somewhere, we could reimburse them. We just need the documentation of that. We, yeah. we have pretty strict guidelines but we're also really flexible Mm -hmm. you know we understand like recovery is just a big gray area Mm -hmm. you know and we just want to be able to help as many people as we can yeah i think on that note just you know because we're looking at four one of the things we've learned as an organization as we've as we've grown through the years to service more people is that um we don't we don't pay for housing expenses your your light bills or any of that stuff because that some of that stuff is so subjective and Mm -hmm. And we've just learned that if we keep the focus on education, which is your tuition and your books, or if you've got a special, as Darcy said, lab, we pay that money straight to that institution. And then if it's not used, um, it comes back to the organization, right. which is really important to our donor base. And, um, and that way, we, th- everything, there's no secrets, right? Everything is direct with the institution and the students got to do their part. Uh, by registering on time. Um, one of the things we've also learned uh, accountability uh, with this group is grade reporting. Mm, and, yep. And it I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. We're, we're very proud of the achievements of our, our group um, in terms of uh, their success with the grades. And one of the things I, I've seen, and Darcy would agree with this too, is once somebody who's been drinking and drugging, um, if they apply that same <laughs> intensity, <laughs> to right. their to their academic work i mean the results are honking amazing mm-hmm. um i think our average gpa yeah, is we what? have tons of straight a students people yeah, people who absolutely said i sucked at school yeah i don't think i can do school and then hopefully their sponsor or somebody you know that they know that's received our scholarship said you might want to try because yeah. I think you'll be surprised. And they are. I think our average GPA is 3.7. Which is, think, that's awesome. I, I, it is. I was, I it's was incredible. With, it's incredible. I was sharing earlier. I, th- I think it's 3.7 this year. It's been as high as 3.8 one year. But I, I think in the last, since we've been tracking, it's it's in that 3.5 to 3.7 range almost every year. So and it's so, just pretty amazing. That is incredible. And so something I really appreciate about the next step and is that I think you all have a laser focus on what your mission is yes. and what it's not. Yep. And it is very um, tempting to have mission creep and to start providing, mm. you know, housing and food vouchers yep. and transportation. And, you know, I, and I think that you do have flexibility in that it's not just a four-year institution, right? It could be, you know, associate's degree, trade school, whatever mm-hmm. that looks like. Mm-hmm. And that a 12-step program is, is part of it. So you're specific, but also flexible. But to me, it seems like you are just laser focused we, on what the mission is. We really are, and we what really it's are. not. We yeah. we provide tuition assistance, you know, and we want to help people, you know, achieve their educational dreams. And for like, we have two students right now that are at St. Charles Community College for welding. Cool, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And we we love supporting the trades. The I mean, tra- there's I mean, just right. there's a huge focus right now on people going back to the trades this and they country really needs it the city needs money. it it's it's a wonderful skill and we have a lot of you know, we have a lot of new donors too who say oh you support the trades right i want to be part of that right um, i i can imagine that that would be a draw for people especially if it if your donor base are people in recovery themselves right yes. who can maybe look at the path that got the path that they took and then the path that got them where they are right now to a place where they can actually afford to donate as well. And I know that you have some very large donors, but like any nonprofit, I'm assuming you also have some donors who give like 25 bucks because they believe in the mission. One of my favorite donations we ever got, I shared about, you know, I, everyone who knows me knows I talk about next step all the time. 
and I you're was, like a walking billboard. I, 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 I love it. I, was at I appreciate that and so I'm, much. And I mentioned is. it, and somebody came up to me afterward and handed me five dollars, and said. Yeah, you know, I can't afford a ticket to the dinner. Can you please put this in the donation? And, and I, I wanted to be a part of tears it. Tears coming down my yeah. face. Yeah, I, yeah. I think one of the things to thanks for your awareness on the fact that the the mission's pretty focused. One of the things that as we've kind of expanded, um, you know, our I'll call it our donor base that has been really really important for us is not only are people passionate about helping those in recovery. But a big part of our donor base today is really passionate about education. Mm, mm-hmm. So yep. it, it, the fact that the two are connected Love it. has raised awareness because generally education can lift people mm-hmm. to a different place, right? And um, we have so many um, uh, people in the past that were, you know, maybe they had a felony or they were incarcerated or single mom, single dad or went through mom and dad's money and, you know, ran out mm-hmm. in, in uh, all different kinds of ways that they can achieve their education. And the fact that we fund not only traditional education, but trade schools, not everybody's meant to go to college. Right. I mean, you know, right. that, I mean, there are true. certain uh, creatives and, and people that, that work well, that never, ever went to school and don't need to go to school. But we help those too. And, and so many times today when we go through the interview process, there are people, people like, well, I didn't, I didn't know you guys would fund me to be a welder or, mm-hmm. or those kinds of things. So we've, we've, uh, we've been surprised ourselves at what we'd learned um, because people, people, again, like I said, we give them a little bit of money. When they get started, most of them are going to community college and they don't lead, need a lot of money. They're taking maybe two classes, right. you know, and they need a thousand bucks. Um, or books and tuition if they're at one of the local community colleges. So we give them a little bit of money. Once they get going, what we really provide is a whole lot of validation that somebody besides their family believes in them. Yeah. Okay. It, there's a huge yes. self-esteem factor totally. that is not written in the mission statement, but that comes when somebody besides aunt, uncle, mom, dad, wife, husband says, mm-hmm. I believe in you. Yes. And I think that the emphasis on education, I think, you know, honestly, we share a lot of very similar donors, right? Yes. Because mm-hmm. right. not yes, only from their roots in the recovery community, but also those people who believe in the power of education mm-hmm. and how maybe with a nugget of education, their life maybe could have been different, usually in our case, or could be different in your case, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that we share a lot of very similar, not not as many donors as our director of development would like, of course, but, um, (laughs) you know, that's their job, right? not sold out, right? right? That's that's their job. But, you know, I think that that is something that really unifies us. I think we are very mission adjacent, yes, right? Like absolutely. we're very, absolutely. very much so. So Clay, you mentioned something that has always been a question of mine. So is there like a mentoring component to this at all? Or once you, I mean, this is going to sound so crass, but once you cut the check, are you just there if you need it? But like, what if there's a welder who's getting their education and there was also a welder who happens to be a donor like is that is there any sort of communication there or not really it's a great question so that's something that we don't have a necessarily formal process for this but we did something this year that we we did it um I think our reason for doing it was not at all how it ended up. And that's the, <laughs> Isn't most, that amazing? the best thing right? ever, that's right? Amazing. It wasn't the cause and effect, so we thought, we but are, the end So here was terrific. the 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 concern was we have all these new students. We have more new students this year than we ever have. We have awesome. 27 first-time recipients. Which means people really got to go to the dinner. To the, yes. to the dinner. Which we'll talk about, yes. Which we will talk about Saturday, and October 7th. we thought how we send them this packet. You know, Clay talked about, you know, the validation they get. Somebody other than mom and dad supports them. So we send, we want, we give them this packet. You know, congratulations, you've received a scholarship. You know, it used to just be an email. We're like, no, we need to give them something physical. And we said, what if we, we have an, we finally have an office space now where oh, people can actually walk cool. in the door. It okay. used to be kind of yeah. a glorified storage space. We run really lean and mean. Right, like, you do. We, because I think our all, rent was $210 a month. And I mean, now, your money goes back into abs- the pockets absolutely. of no. the students. We, right. we, right. Our overhead is so minimal. So You're we not never, even paid. I am not paid, no. Right. Mm, we, okay. we have this space now because we have um, a, a 
almost a full-time administrative person, and so now she has a space to work. And I said, look, we have the space. We can, And we got a co- little conference table donated. And I said, what if we did like four new student orientation oh, sessions? They're all at different that. schools. Some of them are online. Some of them are trade. Some of them are community college. Some of them are Lindenwood, Maryville, all different. But what if we brought them all together, you know, 10 per session? Actually, we might have more than 27 It gives students. them like a we cohort. 30, like I think a we have 37 new students. Community. I misspoke. How, how, many, st- how many? I think students? we have 37 new students. Whoa. I, I think I misspoke. But I'll, I will double check that. But. It's amazing because what happened is they came in, some of them were nervous, some of them knew each other. Because you can reapply every year. Yes, Yes, correct. We have some we followed from their associates through their graduate degree. So we have some that we funded for six or seven years. We should should talk about why. Because somebody who lives in a traditional world will go, why the hell are you funding them for I'll I'll write it down so that we don't forget that. Okay. That's a key part of what. Yes keeps people sometimes from applying. 10-4. So. Okay. Right? okay. So we sat in this orientation and we went over like the housekeeping stuff. We, you know, congratulated and we introduced ourselves. And then I said to a woman sitting to my right, you know, how are you doing? Like, what's your biggest, um, you know, apprehension or what's... And she looked at me and said, you know, I haven't been in school for 30 years. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And the woman from across the room said, girl, I got you. Let me tell you. And they exchanged numbers oh, and they had this moment. And that. that happened at every session to some degree. It was this sense of community that we just didn't, you know, we thought, well, they'll come and the, some of our board members came to, they'll meet some of us. But it was about th- that they met each Damn. other because so often the brand new students, we meet them for the first time at the dinner. Right. And this was just, it was just beautiful. It really mm. was. It was yeah. just a great, great thing. So we really... Um, to your original question about what other like mentoring and support, we want them to, we have several that go to the same school. We have several that have had the same struggles. They shared resources on inexpensive used books. Another Mm -hmm. woman said, do you know that you can print out like uh, 30 pages for free at the St. Louis County Library every day or something like that? It's just the the resources. I just got goosebumps actually. That's amazing. The resources and the community just kept flowing. It was beautiful. Well, because we know that in recovery, connection is key. And and by the way, it's not just in recovery. Like it's connection right. is yeah. all it's all about connection so that is amazing yeah. so talk to me about why you fund folks year after and i feel like at the gratitude luncheon darcy i feel like you sat me with somebody who was like a lawyer or something who oh, mark. mark you had mark, mark. yes mark. and he was like yeah they supported me my and, whole and so, journey so and before like, clay answers what? that see i get so excited before clay answers that let me tell you about mark so mark was you know, a student volunteer at our dinner and met uh, a guest of ours at the dinner who just happened to come along with his wife, who was a friend of someone else's, and he is with the public defender's yes. office. Yes, yeah. <sighs> Met Mark and ended up giving Mark an internship with his office, and then that led Mark into the employment he has with the law firm. So, so cool. that's the kind of mentoring and Isn't the kind of so connections. Cool, I know I'm breaking the fourth happened. wall, but that's yeah. so cool. I just yeah. love this. It's great. So I'll let you. Yeah. So generally, th- think about it. If, if if you know the journey of recovery, um, so they they can apply at a year of sobriety as of our application date, which is deadline, which is April first. So generally, if they're working with their sponsor, the first thing they they are focused on is their sobriety. So the sponsor sure. generally will say, "Don't get your life out of balance." Mm. Your sobriety focus. So most of the time when they start with us, they're starting, as I said a little earlier, a couple classes. Yep. Okay, just kind of because they could be single just mom, single their dad. Legs. Yep. They could they could mm-hmm. be who knows where they're living. They could be living with grandma. You don't know. Right. And and uh and most of them have got to work. They've yeah. got oh, sure. they've got right. restitution they've got to make or uh you know, legal bills legal pay, bills I and mean, all this kind of stuff. So right. they, they generally don't want to need or need to take more than a couple of classes. So sometimes as, as Darcy said, they could be with us six, seven, eight years. And once their sobriety increases and they get more stable in their sobriety, then sometimes they'll move to a full 15 hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so that's the reason we stay in the game with them I love that. as long as they need it. And we do, we do fund um, uh, undergrad and graduate. We, our, our priority is undergrad. We have a huge variety of degrees. Mm. As you guys know, a ton of people who get into recovery they want to go back to school for substance abuse counseling so we do have those two but we have speech pathologists we have um 
you know, people in pre-law, lots of nursing students. Yeah. Digital marketing. Digital marketing, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Paramedics. We have, yeah, lots the, of paramedics. Uh, AMT, we got a couple of those. That are we have a firefighter who's going to be in our video coming up cool. as well. Yeah, we've, yeah. Cool. We've, there's just a lot, of, um, a lot of different career paths. And as we mentioned, I think we have six um, students in the trades right now. The majority, as Clay mentioned, are undergrad. And then I think we have 12 graduate degrees wow. as well. Yeah. And MBAs, you name it. So I know a little bit, but I am curious about how this organization was formed. Because my understanding is it was kind of a kitchen table idea. That's exactly right. Right? That's and exactly uh, right. the some people got volunteered into running it and then now it's become this just like incredible situation. So can you can you shed some light for the people who don't know how how did this get founded? So exactly what you said. It was uh I love kitchen two, table. Ideas. It was it was I think it kind of started at first watch, really. Okay. Which okay. is even better. That's um, fair. We love first yeah. watch. They happen to employ a lot of yes. um, individuals in recovery. Yep. Um the and um, two- Aaron's Aaron's uh, Kingside group, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Kingside Absolutely. Herbie's, yeah. yes, yes, That's yes. Right. So this conversation was... Um, Aaron's one of our board ambassadors. Yeah, so. Aaron's an ambassador yeah, for us. So, yes. Yes. Great. Yes. Yeah. So there was uh, mm. Ron Moser and Janet Edo were with another couple. Amazing at, people. Yes, do a ton for recovery in this community. Mm-hmm. It's, it's unbelievable. They were, they have a regular server and she had <laughs> mentioned that she was trying to go back to school, but didn't have the funds. And actually, the, oh, the wow. first the first funding was actually for her rent because she had um, a scholarship for school, but oh. she was living in an environment that was not safe for her sobriety. Right, right. So the very first scholarship was actually to help her get a place of her own. And then the next year, it was a couple, you know, people for school and it just grew from there. So we have funded, did you, I don't even know if Clay saw the one number. Nine. One over almost two million. We're at one point nine three million dollars since our inception in two thousand five. That is nuts. So after the dinner October seventh, we will be over two million dollars in educational funding. And last year, well, so this year you're awarding two hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. Yes, in scholarships, which is our highest ever. This year we've set all kinds of records. This year we have the most. Dude, your galas are incredible. My jaw is when when it's like (laughs) the fund and need part. I just sit there like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's incredible. I come back and I talk to the team about like. You should see how much money they just and, raised. And, we're and it's amazed. incredible. We're, we're amazed. amazed. And it's grown every year. And I'll yeah. tell you what really helped, uh, what helped tremendously. We have two presenting sponsors this year. We've never had that. So Spirit oh, Jets okay. is a very, very, very generous um, donor and supporter. And um, the owner of Spirit Jets has been doing this for several years. And this year we also have Tegatoff Development, mm-hmm. who wanted to get on board as well. Awesome. And they, um, the fact that, our supporters are not just in the recovery community. Right. They are organizations yep. that know that the people that get clean and sober and continue with education make this city. You know, these are local businesses that want this city yep. to continue well, to improve. It's it's very rudimentary, but at the heart of what you all do is workforce development. That's right. Yes. Exactly what we do. That yes. just so happens to be for people in recovery. Yep. Yeah. But if you can keep people or get them into the workforce, whatever that looks like, I mean, you are, that's economic development. Yeah. So Absolutely. when yeah. I look at the spot, I mean, it makes sense. Why, why would it just be limited to people who have their hands in the recovery community? I mean, it should be everybody wanting to participate in this. That's yeah. right. Especially and we would if love they have to jobs expand. to fill. Exactly. Yeah. We would <laughs> love to expand. We we get asked also, hey, do colleges, do all the different universities and colleges come to your dinner? I think that was partner, what question I asked. Yeah, and they, do they partner with you? And our answer is really no. No. They don't. We would love that. We would love that. We yeah. would, we would, I'd have anyone sit at my mm-hmm. table from, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, SLU or UMSL or WashU or, mm-hmm. you know, when we've had meetings with them, we've had Zooms with them, they're very supportive. They know who we are and they know what we do. But I would love for some other board members to really see what happens at our dinner because we will probably sell out. We yeah. will probably sell I, over 450 tickets. I think what one, Which one is of the just things. Amazing to me. You know what, Nicole, you'll it's know aspirational. This. You'll know this too. One of the things we've learned, um, 
you know, you mentioned at the beginning that most people may not know who you are. You didn't know who you are. I didn't, no. So if you think about recovery and addiction and alcoholism, substance abuse, it's it's a shame-based disease. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we've learned that is that, you know, our awareness level because of the disease has always been, you know, when someone gets a scholarship, mm, sometimes they don't want to talk about how they right. got it. Right, right. And, and then, different than then like the says, rotary I'm or something. I'm admitting I'm in recovery yeah, if I got admit, this scholarship. Right. So, that, so right. that's, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. one of the things. And then two, the nature of sometimes uh, addiction and, and thought processes that it creates is, well, if I tell a whole lot of people, that's less money for me. You know, you know. so we got that too. Behind Understood. Us. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so that kind of goes on. But the other thing that, that we've learned from some of these donors and, and uh, that you and Darcy were talking about a minute ago is most employers and families, everyone they know, there's someone in their immediate circle mm-hmm. who has suffered with the disease. 100%. Or I mean, unfortunately no, died from the disease. Or passed it, away, right? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. It knows no socioeconomic, it knows no neighborhood boundaries, socioeconomic boundaries, blue collar, white collar, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. It knows no boundaries, mm-hmm. the disease of addiction. And um, we've learned that. And so when people hear what we do, as you said earlier, that it changes the thought process about it because the chances are there's a cousin somewhere or you know goofy uncle joe that that uh everybody thought was goofy but really had a problem and couldn't get the help he need or didn't get the help he need and um so they all can relate to it once they hear us mm-hmm. you know uh, mm-hmm. and uh, understand us a little better so we we've seen that in the journey uh, with our donor base also how did you get involved in the organization? I was just going to say, go ahead and talk, because his story ties into also how we kind of define Love financial it. need, because it's different than what a normal scholarship would would delve into. Sure. So it, it it's a great question. You know, uh, my son is a former recipient. Okay. Okay. And um, he wanted to get back to school, got clean. and um, What did he go to school for? He's a he's a graphic designer. Oh, cool! Okay, so okay. he got he got a four O in partying, and then um, <laughs> he 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 had to drop out for mm. um, for various uh, legal challenges. Got I'll it. call it that. And um, once uh, he got uh, home and got clean, um, mom and dad had spent the college education to help get him in treatment. So yeah. we. Kind and of that's a pretty th- common exactly. challenge yeah. for families, right? It's yeah. like they've spent their retirement funds or their funds on, you know, inpatient, outpatient, yep. trying legal to save fees, their kids' life. Trying to yes. save. And so when it when that person is able to make it to a healthier path, the funds aren't always there. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But but you know, we we made the decision that for us to hold on to a college education at the pace we were going, he might not be alive. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you're making a life or death that's situ- right. uh, decision and at that point. That's yeah. right. And so we we all did it with eyes open, and it was very expensive, uh, but well worth it. But yes. once he came home, um, he got into AA community here and, and started making a new network of friends. Um, he'd been in aftercare, and and um, somebody gave him a job, hmm. bussing tables, um, in a restaurant here in town. And um, he started bussing tables, and ultimately, um, after he'd been there a year, he started thinking, mm, I might, I might want to go back to school and uh, pursue my degree. Very creative, talented artist. And um, they said, well, I don't have any money. He said, well, I know about this organization. It's just started. This is in, like, t- 2010. Um, and they're helping people get back to school. Hmm. And so he went on the interview. And I think his first award was like 900 bucks or something, maybe a thousand. And he started at uh, Merrimack and taking two classes, bus and tables. And ultimately, over time, he finally, he graduated in 2013. Uh, I was bawling like a baby. Loved, I'm sure, right? Uh, from, I'm like fighting back uh, yeah, tears just hearing from, this story. Uh, from Mumsel. Mm-hmm. And um, he he now lives in New York. And he's a graphic design at um at a large apparel firm wow. and, and married. And, and how many years did, sober does he have? Uh, at, as of today, he's got 13. Whoa. Um, wow. You know, in August, be 14, God willing. And um, so after he had got his scholarship for a couple of years, there was somebody on the board 
uh, who's no longer on the board, but they pestered the living crap out of me. That's mm-hmm. often how it happens. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, uh-huh. You know, just kind of just dogged persistence got pushed me, pushed me, pushed me to get involved. And um, and I've been involved ever since. So that's that's how I got involved. And <laughs> his wife's on our board as well. Clay and Lynn are integral to our board. And Sandy Wool, who's our treasurer, who's probably been the longest tenured board member, yeah. he's been amazing. We have... I have never been more excited about the board that we have today because we have 16 board members and every single one of them works. You know, when we talk to a potential new board member, we try and say, you know, we're a working board, right? But they don't. I mean, no they one really, really understands. I'm, I'm yeah, we're, not a re- we're not a resume builder board. <laughs> right? No, no, nobody. We don't do our name on letterhead. The the um, the working board term is is used. You know. In a lot of cases, but I'm on other boards. There's nothing like this, and I'm just so I'm so proud of the group. And now, as Clay mentioned earlier, we have these board ambassadors. So we have 11 other members of the community, maybe the medical community or the recovery community, who are not necessarily board members, but they are spreading the word about what we do, and they'll all be at the dinner. And it's really that's helped tremendously. That's helped us get more sponsors than yeah. we ever have this year. Um, it's really. A beautiful thing. Our, you know, our founder will be at the dinner, and um, yep. it's. We have two other donors who, over the years, have stepped up to do supplemental scholarships as well. So we have a special scholarship for single parents, and then we have another scholarship that's almost like gap funding. You know, because mm. if you have a student, we have a student at community college, they might only need fifteen hundred dollars. You can get up to five thousand dollars, by the way. Okay, good yeah. for good. graduate or vocational. Yeah, we did, and then up to four thousand. No, I'm sorry. Uh, what's graduate? Three thousand for graduate mm-hmm. degree. Yeah. And five we, under we've three, changed it over three. the years. But sure. right now we're five thousand is the max. Um and, and if somebody's at a, a school that's expensive, um and they are rooted in recovery and their work life family balance is good and they you know, sponsor recommendation, they will get a significant part of their tuition funded. That's great. And then we had a donor who came along and said, I wanna f- I want to gap fund them. If they still have a seven thousand dollar shortfall, I want to cover that. That is, it's incredible. We awarded uh, three people this um, Gina May Weesey Memorial Scholarship this year, and they should not really have any out of pocket mm. at all. And mm. I was at the dinner when Jim Murphy when yes. he. Uh, that's right. Announced the, that's single, the single, single parent. parent. It's the Barbara that's Murphy single, single parent scholarship. Yes. I was balling and at the uh, table I was at, yeah, everyone right, was crying. Yeah, right. that, the um, that winner table of that of this year will be a surprise. And that yes, particular okay. individual has been chosen already. And we're very excited. Whoa. Yes. How did you get involved with this? Mm. I didn't ask. Uh, oh, yeah, you got to cover that story. I know. Um, I didn't ask. It's really, it's really, I've been in the floor covering business my whole life. I saw the carpet, floor covering. Carpet, tile, okay. wood, and stone. I had no uh, they idea. They just ordered new carpet for uh, Yeah, I, I had no idea here. what any of this was about. A former employee of mine said to me after I just had my second baby, so this would have been in like 2010, he said, I just joined this amazing organization. Will you come to the dinner? And I said, I have a toddler and a new baby. I'm not coming to a dinner. I'm right. not putting on a dress. And he said, this is so up your alley. You need." And I had just sold my business. And he said, you need to come. And I said, maybe next year. Thinking, oh, he's never going to call me. Again. Right, of right? course. Because that's what you say. You put someone off. Yeah, right? yeah oh, we'll do lunch. Next time, we'll do lunch. Yes, let's, go, let's go meet for coffee. And and like, oh, this is Chris, of course. Yeah, like yeah. clockwork. Before the dinner next year, he called me. And he said, okay, you got a seat at my <gasps> table. And I said, Chris, can I just write you a check? And he said, no. He said, Gosh, no. you sound like me. Yeah, he oh said, we don't want your money. Can we want you donate? there. And I said, oh, now I'm intrigued. And I'm telling you, it was at the MAC downtown. That's where we used to have it. Mm. There was a very impactful speaker. Uh, it was, it just blew me away. And I've been involved ever since. I think I was on the board within three months of that dinner. Wow. I just said, I have to be part of this because I could, I heard the recipient's explaining how going back to school, finishing something they started, mm. whether it was five years later, or thir- we have recipients in their in their late 60s. That's something yes. so cool. I'm so glad you brought that said, up. You know, yes. I, I, I haven't been in school since I was you know 22 years old. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my degree, but I want to finish something I started. Yeah. And we had a gentleman who came to us and he had done his homework. He needed like $704. Yeah. And we said we would be honored to give you seven hundred four dollars, 
And That's he, all he works um, at the uh, is it Independent Center in mm-hmm. the city oh, and refers yeah. people okay. to us all the time because he said, "Look, if, look, if I can do it, you can do it." Right? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Our ages are eighteen to sixty-four currently. That I was think. something I was really. I, I don't know why I was shocked about it, but I was when I went when I first was um, introduced to y'all, and I realized the breadth and depth of the people that you all. Um, serve that you fund Mm. you know you're you're talking about single parents you're talking about people who are in their you know late 50s going back and and completing something but also just feeling that support of people who believe in them uh it's like a country music video or something reba mcintyre like is is their life out there video or something i don't know and we know we know because we've seen it we a lot of not a lot of our students relapse they don't. Now, maybe is it because they're rooted in, in the recovery program? I, I believe it is so much in part because they go back to school and they change their life. Education mm-hmm. changed lives. Education is the key. It really is the key. One of the things I think that – this is anecdotal, but I believe it with all my heart and soul. Once they get the fundamentals of a 12-step program down, they start working a 12-step program. It gives them the structural foundation – of accountability with the sponsor, they take that same process to their schoolwork. Mm. The structure of classes. Interesting. The structure yeah. of having to go to class or go on a Zoom. Right. And completing and homework completing and assignments homework, and things like Just like, like they're, that. they're doing step four or whatever. Right, right, you know, right. those Interesting. Kind, those are, they get that structure and then they ultimately, that's why hmm. we do so well, they do so well in school. I think it's just my opinion. And then I think that's why they become terrific employees. Wow. They, yeah, they, they ask for help. They have a community. Yeah. They have yeah. a support network. You know, it's not just them as a student going back to school and trying to navigate this really foreign world. Some of them uh, have never, especially in COVID, you know, they had to navigate virtual yeah. school. Yeah. The people that I know who have been recipients and who have also been employees are bulldogs. Yeah. They're, they're determined. Really- they're yeah. persistent. Um, they're, they want to do better yep. for themselves, for their community, for their family. They also, you know, if I'm being honest, they kind of have something to prove. Yeah. And we always say we help people who are already helping themselves. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. You know, so they're t- not going to apply for the scholarship and they're not going to go through the process of going back to school if they're not pretty sure mm-hmm. that that's what they want to do. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. And then they you, succeed. Yeah. Your, your comment on something to prove is true. They want to prove that they can finish school. I want to yeah. prove I can better be a better husband better wife, mm-hmm. better mom, dad, son, whatever. And so they, they got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And a lot Which of it, too. Good. Which yeah, is I was going to say, I, I appreciate it's that. Good, yeah, that's that's good right. chip. And, it's a good and, chip. And they, and they're, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're looking, they're looking in the, in the uh, they're not looking in the rearview mirror. Right. Okay. They're looking forward. But at the same point in time, they, they've got that chip on their shoulder and they want to stay on the path that has been a better life for them. That's and right. so that's that. That's one of the things that motivates them. One of the recipients um, that we employed um, that came in, and I didn't even have a job opening, and I basically was so impressed with what they were selling, and what they were selling was them themselves, yeah. right? Yeah. And I was so impressed, and honestly, I was kind of speechless because I was pretty new in my role. I was like, oh, I I have the power to hire somebody before I even have a position, right. but I they. They won me over. And, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. And maybe that was because of the education. Maybe it was because of the recovery program. Maybe because it was you it was you all. Maybe it was because of the family support. It's probably a little bit of everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's mm-hmm. it's a little bit of everything. One of my favorite interviews, we we going through the interview and this young man looked up at me and he's and he kind of had his arms crossed. His body language is a little closed yeah. off, you know. And I said, do you, do you have any questions for us? And he said, yeah, what's the catch? Mm. And I said, there's, yeah. there's no catch. And he said, what, what do I have to do? I said, you know what? Stay sober and stay in school and just be accountable to catch, us. Right. That there's no catch. And he could not believe it. Because, and Clay has said this so many times, people are just not used to getting a win. They're just and that's not, not used just to people getting in a win. recovery. But right. That, I in mean, general. Really, that's right. In general. And but, especially when you've been... I mean, you've been through a lot. Exactly. So you're exactly. not used to getting away. And it's it's this is the best job I've ever had. This it is really a win. is because mm-hmm. it is we're helping people 
win all day long. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk nitty gritty here. So the event is Saturday, October seventh. Uh, yes. You are like registration is open, so people Abs- absolutely. Yes. And like I said, we probably will sell out. Mm-hmm. Um, so if somebody's interested, please go to our website. There's um, there's still tables available. There are individual tickets available. We have Tim Izell is our MC this year. He's going to share a little bit of his story yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's. We've been. We we are so happy he was available. Yeah, um, that's great. And so if they want to register, it's the next step. STL.org. Yep. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Correct. And uh, it's party attire. That's something else I just want to mention. Like, yeah. it feels like a party. It does. And that's we say, party. like, anything goes. I mean, I'm always like, what anything am I going to wear? But we, it feels party like a party. Attire, whatever you consider party attire, that's what that's you wear. That's what you should wear. That's, that's what you right. wear. There's right. no there's no rules. We're just a no. bunch. We're just a bunch of people having fun. We have a big coffee bar. Yeah. We yeah, really yeah, yeah. make it... Um, it's at the Sheridan Westport, Sheridan Chalet. They're great partners too. We to serve so yeah. much coffee at this event; they actually have to rent <laughs> coffee carafes. They yeah. don't. They don't possess in that hotel. They don't possess fifty coffee carafes. Can I tell yeah. you that the first Sands Bar we did, we did not have coffee, coffee. because oh. we weren't like sure, like no, yeah. if cafe, like how that was going to work, and we realized very quickly like we need, we a need coffee drink like yep. we, absolutely yeah yeah so yeah. it's there were a, now that you say that i do remember they, a lot of they, coffee the hotel that is amazing like, oh, next up event we got to get those crafts <laughs> i yeah. love this yeah darcy clay thank you so much for taking the time today um i hope us. that we shed a little bit of a light on the next step um if at all possible i really strongly encourage people to come out to the dinner because i just think it's uh it, it opened your opens your eyes i think your, the event is really well done i'm not just saying that and it's run by our, our students volunteers it is so they'll be over they'll probably be 70 students it is volunteering. done so well yeah. and i think like you definitely need to bring kleenex or wear waterproof mascara <laughs> because it's just one of those kinds yeah. of things but not in an overdone sort of way like it doesn't feel heavy-handed i just think it's one of the best events that i personally um get the opportunity to go to so uh Saturday, October 7th. Um, check out the next step stl.org. Thank you both so much Thanks for being for on. Us. Uh, I would be thank remiss you. if I did not thank our sponsor, Hubbard Radio, for giving us the space to do thank this. Thank you, Hubbard. Yes. And uh, if you like what you're listening to, please consider rating, reviewing, or subscribing. That way you get these uh, whenever they come out and right in your uh, inbox or wherever you get your podcasts. So thank you again for being here today. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by PreventEd. PreventEd works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.